welcome in the presence of God, our Father. We praise you, bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Follow I love the charger. You. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom. Amen. Praying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify you. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. Bless you. you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and yes. with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love the Lord. Uh, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> On these two commandments hang depend all the law and the prophets. Thank you, Jesus. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, hear our cry and heal our land. Let kindness lead us to repentance, bring us back again. Now because we're still brushing our teeth. Bless you, Jesus. And what I mean by that is that there's a lot of distraction in the room right now. And I know that we carried in all the things that we've got going on this afternoon. 
and the yes. football game that we want to watch and the breakfast that we didn't have or the coffee that we spilled. I just want to take a, a moment to surrender so that we can be unified as a body yes, Jesus. and uh, hear what the Lord has for us. Yes. This isn't a punishment. This isn't a spanking. <laughs> this isn't Father saying, attention, please. This is the Heavenly Father saying, attention, please. Yes, Lord. Father, we just surrender to you today. We ask that all the fears and worries and conversations and distractions that would keep us from receiving fully from your presence, from your hand today, would be washed away, yes. put on pause if they need to be put on pause, so that we might pick them up after spending this time hearing Praise from you. Jesus. We surrender. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's pray. O oh, merciful God, grant that your faithful people grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue Amen. our worship. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are wonderful, Lord. You are merciful. You are righteous. We thank you, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. us by still waters into mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God.
Father God, we praise you, Jesus. We exalt your name, Father. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Come as you promised, fall on this place come move in power lord have your way i will wait for you i will wait for you i will like you promised. Come like you promised, Lord, in this place. Come move in power, Lord, have your way. I will Oh, 
very often and the Lord has to really twist my arm to speak up but um, he's been speaking to me for the last few weeks and we we spend quite a bit of time first part of the service asking for the Lord's presence and um, when we got to the chorus here I will wait for you and I could hear the Lord singing over us yes I will wait for you Mm. Yes. that I want to give my presence, that Thank I you, want Jesus. to be here, but I need you to be here to receive my presence. Mm. So whatever it is that's going on in your life that's keeping you from being present here this morning, wash it aside and let the Lord's presence fill us. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thanks, Bob. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you. When the stars turn down and the earth wears out and we stand before the throne with witnesses who have gone before we will rise and all applaud seeking blessing and honor glory and power forever to our God seeking blessing honor, glory, and power forever to our God. When the of time wipe fully down and the earth is pulled up like a scroll the trumpets will call the world will fall to his knees we all go home pointing blessing and honor glory and power forever to our God singing blessing and honor glory and power forever to our God, singing blessing and honor, glory and power forever to our God, singing blessing and honor, glory. 
Lord, as we stay in this place of listening, I pray that you would pour out your words of faith and grace upon this community. We thank you for our children as they head to Sunday school. We pray your blessing on them, that they would know your story, that they would uh, see their, your story coming alive in them, and that they would grow into your full stature, Lord. Lord, as we wait and listen, would you just um, speak to us? The Lord wants to know that you're a very gifted bunch. <laughs> that he's taking those gifts and he wants to uh, take away the shadow of the past. You know, we have teachers and mentors and friends and parents and uh, people who have taught us things, and we tend to live in the shadow of, oh, if I could only be like them, and the Lord is saying right now, you are casting your own shadow. He's taking your gifts and multiplying them so that you can apply them in a way that will bless others. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. I agree. He's good. Anybody feel the nudge? Something the Lord wants to say right now? The invitation to worship is one that we have every Sunday. Thanks be to God. But today there is a desire, I believe, where the Holy Spirit wants to pierce every heart. Pierce every heart. And that is not a mortal wound, friends, but that is a wound for life itself to break in. So I pray that that would be a true word for you if that feels like something that is speaking to your heart. I pray that you would accept that and welcome that. Welcome that into your life and trust that that would be a holy wound, a mm. wound that would not harm you but would heal you from the inside out. Thank you, Lord. Come on up, Joe. Thank you, thank you. Go for it. 
No worries. You take it as long as what the Lord's nudged you to say. Yeah. Yeah, you could keep your sermon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sermon part two. So amen to what you guys said. You came up here and you have a word. Um, I had a dream last night and I had a dream about a high school girlfriend. And it wasn't that high school girlfriend. <laughs> but I told her about this. And the, you know, dreams are really weird, right? You can be seated if you'd like. <laughs> Dreams are really weird. Um, I dreamt she needed to go to Home Depot, and so we went to Home Depot on the street I grew up in in Bedford, just a small side street, and there was a house painted like a Home Depot, and it's like you go inside of it, and suddenly it opens up into this big cavern of being a Home Depot. But the front of it is just a house, kind of like Men in Black or something like that. You know? <laughs> I woke up and uh, started praying for her. Prayed that can you grab me uh, that she had met someone that would where she would find the Lord, or maybe she went to a church and got saved. Mm. And then I started praying for my wife, my sons, and praying for relationships. I think this church needs a lot of healing too in a way that um, there's relationships in here that are still a little on the rough side. You know, I mean, I know we all love each other. God, I love you guys so much. Mm -hmm. And I know you love me too. But sometimes um, just things get on the rough side. There's a couple guys in this church that I don't get to see often enough, and we call each other once in a great while, and um, that's pretty cool. I think in particular, though, I want to say we need to pray for marriages. Mm -hmm. Without a strong family and strong marriages, our church and our country, we're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. We have to stand together. And if there's something going on in your relationship right now with your spouse mm -hmm. or with your kids or with me, <laughs> you need to wash over each other. And um, I don't know if that sounds right when I tell you what to do. Um, but I had this picture of getting a washing like in a car wash. Mm -hmm. And if you go through a car wash and that, <laughs> I remember a dog we had used to bark at the water hitting the car. But if we, mean, we need to be washed off and let the Holy Ghost come and just go <laughs> and wash crap off of us. Mm -hmm. Wash that junk that, Amen. what you just said, wash wow. off the old stuff, the old shadows. People, some people look at us and still see us by the sins we used to commit. Mm. And that's not us anymore. Amen. Thanks be to God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The stuff I used to pull, I couldn't stand here anymore. I couldn't even come in the door. Yeah. But God is God and God is good. Amen. So if you don't want to do it now, but I'm going to pray anyhow. Maybe this afternoon or tonight before you go to bed, you pray over each other. Mm. Don't get in the shower so you can do that <laughs> and get washed clean. But um, Father God, I want to lift up our church to you, Father God. Yes, I lift Lord. up marriages and I lift up families. And I pray, God, that you would, you would bring something about that, even in all the things that have happened here, that it still hasn't so happened Lord, yet. Morning, a new, fresh awakening. When you look at the body of Christ, that we would just communion. love on each other so much. We love our mothers and fathers. And this even though they're gone, broken, some of them, we still love them. And love them more. And we tell them today. 
I love you, Kathy. I love you so much. I pray this in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, for the last several Sundays, the Lord's put a scripture on my heart from Proverbs, and I felt like this morning was the day to share it with, with you, because I need to hear it too. It's from Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he, he will make your path straight here or he will direct your path. So if you're looking for a way to go, you're in a situation where you need some direction, Listen to him. He will direct your path. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Dan? Dan, over here. I have, um, I have something. I feel like the Lord would want me to walk around and, and play the flute. Mm. Please. While you're getting ready to do that, um, Mary came forward and she said, you know, we, we have a Eucharistic service. Every Sunday we come and our focus is the table. And the Lord says, my body is broken for you. And the, the illustration for us is that we, we need to recognize that the body that is broken is our body and that we need to be unified. And his death not just only signifies our salvation, but making us whole, that we might be unified in him. So let's just listen as Pam prophesies through flute. How beautiful is that? <laughs> just let the Lord speak to you. Whatever you feel like he's nudging you to, if there's a testimony out of that, let, let it stir in you. Uh, write it down if you've got a pen, or write it down later on. Uh, but make sure that if there's a testimony of what God is speaking and uh, how it's filled out this week, um, that you come and share it.
thank you, Lord, for speaking to us and over us through what I feel like was a lyrical um, psalm of ascent. As we enter into your presence, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, continue to guide us into your fullness and that we would hear each of us hear how we are to enter in and use our gifts for the purposes of your kingdom call. Let's look. There's a passage in Zephaniah, dear ones, where it talks about God being present in the midst of judgment. But one of the things that he says is such a gorgeous image, and I think it, it touches on some of the themes that we have been hearing from those who have received the word today. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it will be said of Jerusalem, Fear not, Zion. Let your hands not grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. If that's not the picture for this morning, I don't know what is. <laughs> Praise be to God. Thank you. And now for announcements. <laughs> there's, there's no, it's seamless, Lord. You know, the, the things that we hear from the Lord, uh, if we could quiet down. I, I felt like when I was in Israel, Kristen and I both talked about this, um, how we felt like there were no margins. And so as we prepare the schedule for this coming trip in June, we're going to try to schedule in some margins, even if it's a five minute just pause in the places that we are so that we can pray and receive. I pray that you receive this morning. For some of you, um, things like that are, are foreign. It might seem like an interruption in the flow of worship. And um, I would say to you, get ready because there's more coming. Um, because I think that God wants to interrupt and, uh, and share the gifts of the body for the, the equipping of the body so that we can go out and have a testimony of his power and great love for us. So anyway, um, this is going to be the, the coming up is the last Sunday. Jim, is it this Sunday or next Sunday, the last Sunday? Today. Today is the last day to sign up to get your picture taken for our directory. Now, you may not want to be in a picture. You may not like your pictures. You may not feel like you take a good picture. Get over yourself. <laughs> um, it is so much nicer to be able to have a picture, a face with a name. Uh, and, and I don't mean to be crass. If, if you really have an aversion, I'm not going to force anyone. But certainly, um, it, it is good for the body to know each other and be able to put a face with a name. And very helpful, uh, especially for... Uh, w when I first came in, uh, the, the faces and names were really helpful. I know for, for John and Amy as they're entering in and still figuring this all out, that it's really helpful. So please uh, sign up today so that you can get your picture. You don't have to buy anything, so if you don't want to pay for a package, no worries. Um, just leave it at that. We do have a, a, uh, an expert in Jewish history coming to us. Um, we're joining with... CMJ and HarvestNet to to host. Um, I forget his first name. Kelvin, Kelvin Crombie, and uh, Kelvin will be speaking at Trinity School for Ministry, and then buzzing over to us uh, to share with us on the 21st of this month. So mark your calendars. The information is on the uh, newsletter announcement, and it's on our web page. So uh, please join us for that if you can. The, there's bulletin inserts out on the cafe area, and it's in, on the welcome board as you walk in. So thank you very much. Um, we're excited because it, it's going to be a great night of hearing a little bit more of our roots. Uh, it also primes the tank for us going over to Israel next summer. Um, the Anglican course continues today. Um, 
Father John is, is teaching that. It's a great opportunity, even if, if you haven't been yet, uh, any place that you can come in in the flow of that course after having had lunch. Uh, there will be an announcement out there that we're starting in here. Uh, please come and join the class and uh, just get to know who we are historically a little bit more. The Souders. Can I have you guys stand up? Let's just all stare at them and make them feel uncomfortable right now. And, and I would do the same um, for, uh, for each of the clergy as they're taking over new roles. I'm working with Father John and Amy about you know, some of the things that we're developing there. And when those things become solidified, we'll do the same thing. But we had a meeting a, a couple of weeks ago where we sat with our prayer teams and intercessors and said, the mantle has been placed. The Lord had said to me at the beginning of the summer last year, diversify, and I had no idea what he meant. Like, I don't have stock portfolio. Um, so I was like, diversify, what does this mean? And then all of a sudden we had this influx of clergy and uh, the grace to be able to share their gifts for ministry. The Souders are blessed and gifted in the areas of healing and intercession uh, of prayer ministries, and they're going to take over those ministries. So I publicly wanted to pass that mantle to them. We did that with the prayer teams two weeks ago, but I'd just like to do it right now. Father, thank you. Thank you for my friends and my colleagues, for uh, the gift and blessing it is to have their leadership in our midst. And I pray as the mantle of this, these ministries um, come upon them, that you would grace them with wisdom and joy. Uh, fill their cup up, Lord, with to overflowing, that we, as we grow in these areas, will continue to um, have strength as a church that believes in healing, that dispenses healing as your ministers, and that brings about a transformation of changed lives. We bless you for their ministry, for their focus, and we ask, Lord, that you would give them every good gift necessary. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here endeth the announcements. Let's turn our attention now to the reading of God's word. Our first reading today is from Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18, beginning at verse 1 through 4, and then 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, Everyone according to his ways declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. 
Cast away from you all the transgressions you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. Our next reading is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 21. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and for you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O God. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and his testimonies, for your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him. He will instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. O guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament lesson for today is Philippians. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind having the same love, being in full accord and with one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. 
Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty. Be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, what do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind, and he went. And he went to the other son, and he said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of their father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness <laughs> and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, we thank you, Lord, for um, your word. Thank you for the riches that are there. Thank you for the daily call, um, even when we are asked by you to read it and we say yes we'll do it and then we don't um, Lord I pray that you would make us hunger hunger for your word hunger for your truth we pray in Jesus name amen Alan would you mind sharing what you shared with me this morning yeah right now I think it, it illustrates and, and sort of sets up where the Lord wants me to go today. So. We've been told that we should request the presence of God to come among us. And that is one way of looking at our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. 
I suggest that he might want us to see it in a different way. That when we live the way he tells us, we bring his presence into our community and into the world. The Ten Commandments, the Ten Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, always forgiving, always treating others as we want to be treated, always speaking the truth in love. When we live this, we bring God's presence into our community and into the world. Thank you. Have you heard the sermon already? <laughs> um, God's got a, got a shadow for us to cast. He's got a, a blessing for us to give. Um, I, I have uh, been aware that, that we've been on a trajectory of discipleship. I don't know, know if you have received it that way. Um, but over the last several months, since the end of May, uh, the scriptures have led us through uh, Romans and through a series of gospel texts as well as Old Testament lessons that should ha have us uh, getting a new paint job. You know, God made us with two nostrils, I think, sometimes, so they can constantly be respraying us. He holds us up just like this. And... <laughs> it's not to whitewash us, but it's, it, it is to refurbish us, to restore us, to put us in a place where we're prepared to live and receive, live and receive, live and receive. You don't live if you don't have fuel to function from. And the Lord wants us from his word and from fellowship in the body, for, from the gifts that we have to continue to receive. And that's where we just pour it. I, I, I constantly hear people say, well, I just... I don't, I don't talk like you do. My kids, my, one of my kids would say to me, I, I just don't see miracles the way you do. I get Jesus, he's cool. But I, I, don't, I don't see the loaves and the fishes. I just don't see how that could happen. And then when you stand in that place on the Galilee and you read the scriptures and you, you start to see the outpouring of the grace that had to be received by all of these people being fed and the story whispered through the crowd that it began with just a small offering and it was God that blessed it and made it huge. It's not just a metaphor. I believe it really happened. I believe that there were leftovers. Um, but I, I just see God um, telling a story that has to captivate us and that's what we just heard from the gospel lesson, right? The prostitutes and the tax collectors go before you. Ouch. But we have been good Jews. We, we follow the law. We bow when we're supposed to bow. And then we say that as Episcopalians and now Anglicans. You know, we do the liturgical thing. We've punched our card. We are good people. But then the scripture just takes it a little further and says, do you honor God when it doesn't have a reward? Do you do his will when no one's looking? Do you seek to follow him? We've had um, really great sermons by a number of us, and I include myself in that, of course. <laughs> um, but we, we, over the last several weeks, um, Joy started us off with, you know, just this sense of the principles of Christian integrity and how if we're in a covenant relationship with God, we, we love in a way that um, doesn't compromise. We love with, uh, with a sense that we uh, are the people that we say we are. And people talk about us that way. They say, Joy Unger, she can be trusted. You can trust her counsel and her wisdom. 
because they've seen it. It's been tested with fire. They know from watching her live that she produces fruit with her life. In the same way, we could say the same thing. We are called to be out of the old self and into the new self. That, as it says in Romans 12, uh, that, that we are to present our bodies in a sacrificial way. Amen. You know, that doesn't mean that you let somebody cut you up and you get up on a table and you drain your blood or anything gruesome like that. It means that you lay down the work and life of the flesh for the life of the spirit. And it sometimes is uncomfortable or awkward. The Lord has often given me words for people and I go, really? Do, do you really want me to deliver that? Because it's, it's, in my position, sometimes filled with correction, direction, and rebuke. Because that's the authority level that I've been given as the rector of this church and as a priest in his church. Following that, Father Andrew gave a sermon um, about the, pre the principles of reconciliation. And he talked about the fact um, that we have obligations that exist beyond our ignorance. We can claim that we didn't know or didn't see, but we sort of function in a world with, with our eyes open and that we owe each other uh, um, a ministry of reconciliation, that we are held accountable to the authority that we carry. And as followers of Christ, as believers in God, and especially, he said, as clergy, we carry an authority that we'll be held accountable for. And that in that passage from Ezekiel that he preached on, he, he said that, you know, our inaction, our inaction is equivalent to murder and the consequences that follow. And it's a warning that Ezekiel had to give. Father John talked to us the next week about the principles of forgiveness. Okay, we've gotten integrity reconciliation, forgiveness. Um, here we are, and we, we heard the question asked, how many times? Seven, 70 times seven? Seven times 70? Whatever, 77? Uh, it's been interpreted different ways. I'll give you one more. In Genesis chapter 4, we talk about the, the curse of the fall that falls on the sons of Adam. And Cain was killed. I mean, Abel was killed by Cain, and on Cain came a curse of seven generations. Forgiveness as an active part of the body is an active part of being the body of Christ to the world, offering them a reverse of the curse that came from the fall. Amen. It was later fallen upon the family that there would be 70 times, seven, 70 generations of curse because of what was done in that family line. And it still exists today. But there's a grace that's coming to even those who have been born under a line, under a generational curse, because that grace supersedes any of it. He's the one that offers forgiveness to us, that we might be forgiven a debt that only grace can cover. Following that, I, got, I preached a sermon on uh, principles of righteousness last week. And I feel as though the Lord continues to give us a, a, a place where we hear um, that in order to make a life that, that is blessed, we hear in the Christian realm a, a call, a desire to be blessed, a desire to have the outpouring of the Lord's gifting and um, finances and encouragement, but really the blessing that comes is God's favor in the midst of being righteous, and sometimes that means righteous suffering. Not always righteousness being money and blessing and joy and peace, those things come from doing the will of God. So you can see the pieces falling together. God is saying, church, what's your part? 
What's your part in this body of Christ that we call together? Are you committed to it? Or are you just sort of a dangling modifier? You know, you're sort of out, out there like a, you know, um, some kind of mutant form of sixth finger uh, that, that's not really necessary or not used. Um, because that's the way sometimes we function as a body. And this is a rebuke to me as much as it is to you. Are we doing our part? Are we willing to sacrifice to be fully a part of the body? And what are those gifts? We might not know what they are. Pray. Pray that the giver of all good gifts would give you an understanding of what your gifts should be so that you might live in integrity and do your part, that you might follow the principles. You know, if you spent any time in one book, it could be just Romans because it has all of um, systematic theology in it. And as it unfolds the first eight chapters of Romans, which covers a majority of the themes of systematic theology, uh, it just unpacks them in pragmatic terms in the later chapters, and that's where we are. So today, as we, as we look to uh, the principles that God wants to to speak over us, we hear this gospel lesson. And in the gospel lesson, uh, Jesus is, as always, getting the attention uh, of his disciples and those who are following. He says, a man has two sons. And he went to the first son. He said, son, go to work in the vineyard today. I need you. We need extra hands. And he answered, I will not. Ouch. We haven't had any sons or daughters that have been obstinate ever, right? <laughs> or been the son or daughter who has been obstinate. But afterward, he changed his mind. What a blessing it is to have your father need you. And, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, and I, I ought to respect that. And he went to the other son, and he said the same. And the son said, I go, sir. You know, have you ever... Remember Highlights Magazine? Hi Highlights Magazine used to have this uh, cartoon called Goofus and Gallant. And it always made fun of poor Goofus because Goofus was choosing the wrong things. And it was, it was a good illustration. But I think, I think Gallant was just a, 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 um, a, a, a nerdy in your face, I'm the do good deed doer. And I always used to resent Gallant. <laughs> Here's Gallant. I go, sir. I'm the good son. But he doesn't go. Which of these two will the will, did the will of the father, they said? The first, of course. And Jesus shifts gears. He's not talking about tax collectors or prostitutes. But the general listening populace at this point in time are listening because they want to judge his words and judge the righteousness of his words because it applies to whether or not the righteous will receive the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is telling stories all over the place and bringing power to change lives. And he's saying, you know what? Those you have deemed unrighteous will go first because they get it. They're hungry. They see transformation and they want to see more. They've seen God say, I love you. I chase after you like the prodigal son. I don't care if you ate with pigs. I'm going to hike up my skirt and do what isn't right in culture and run across the field and embrace my son. And I'm going to say, ring, robe, sandals, party. Let's restore this guy to the family. John came to you in the way of the righteous. You did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. What did John preach a baptism of? Repentance, I heard that. Turn around. Do you think they turned around? Do you think prostitutes and tax collectors immediately turned around? Maybe for a moment. Maybe some of them permanently. Some people have the ability to change like that. I was not one of those people. 
<laughs> I wasn't. Last night, my high school classmates celebrated 40 years. I so wanted to be there, but there's another part of me that said, I so did not want to be there. <laughs> Because there was a, a group of them that were spending most of their time trying to be like they were back in the day. And I don't want to be anything like I was when I was 18 years old. Because my feet were so planted in two different worlds that I wasn't recognizable for who I am today. I didn't carry the authority that I carry today. I didn't carry the anointing that I carry today. And I'm glad that I carry this anointing and authority today. I don't want to be that guy again. So the tax collectors and the prostitutes, maybe they changed momentarily, but something got planted in them. That they knew that they were loved and that they could be received because of their repentance. And thus began a journey, just like it began for you and I. Amen. Draw us back to the Lord's feet. In the passage um, from Philippians, Ask uh, an amazing question. You know, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in participation in the Holy Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy. Paul was saying, it gives me life. It gives me life when you're of the same mind. It gives me life when you're of the same love. It gives me life when I see the body at work. It's so cool to see quiet hands doing diligent work to care for others. I love it. I love it when I see people praying. I love it when I overheard, hear the whisper of, the Lord told me to tell you, if that means something to you, then great. If it means nothing to you, just store it up in your heart. He'll unfold it for you. And if it's still nothing, then let it go away. But I believe that the Lord's given me something to share with you. That's the body at work. Do, not, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Today... God wants to grab a hold of us and say, here are some principles of surrender. Surrender. Many times we are given gifts and we say uh, there, there are gifts in the body that we want to see uh, laid out. In, in Romans chapter 12, it sort of lays out, it says, you know, um, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Well, you know, I don't want to bother anybody. I don't have enough time. It's not convenient on Monday night. I wish it was Tuesday night. I've said those very th same things. I'd like to sleep in on Sunday morning and have it be an option. Let Pastor Pillow preach to me. Sing in the undercover choir, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I know that I can't. Not just because I'm clergy, but because I count it an honor yeah. to be here. Yeah. I count it an honor to be in this place. And when we're committed to a body, we're committed to a body. It's not, well, you know, I'm going to check out this church, and then I'll go over to this church, and then I'll go over to this church, because it's soup du jour, but you never really get body ministry that way. So it's not as much a rebuke as a, oh, you're missing out. You're missing out from walking those long walks with the body, uh, with people that you might not really like too much. But because of a long ministry in the same direction, you find that God's grace is speaking to you in a way that brings power and transformation to your life, not just the lives that you're serving. So as Paul says in Romans 12, Hey, if you've got gifts of prophecy, let them be in proportion to your faith. And if you've got no faith, well, you've got no prophecy. So why don't you start stoking the fires of your faith and put it out there? You know, take, take some time and trust the Lord to, you know, drum up the strength, speak out. 
And if it's not the Lord, then it's not the Lord. But you're starting to discern. You've got better sense and sight. You've got better smell and, and, and sound. You can hear. Oftentimes, we've been encouraged to, to use the, um, the body parts as we've been given. One mouth and two ears, right? We should listen more. But in the Spirit, I believe that we should speak more. We should be listening. You always should be tuned in with spiritual ears. But if the Lord has nudged you in a particular direction to bring encouragement, comfort, or strength to somebody, that should flow through you like air. It should be the context in which you operate. How do you get there? You get there by surrendering to it, by trusting that God has given you something uh, that is beyond your control, and if you would trust him, you would move in it. So Paul goes on, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Gary is more significant than me. And today, if I was to, to say something to Gary, I would say, Lord, what do you want me to say to bless my brother Gary? What would bring him strength today? Anybody around you, you could say the same thing or ask the same prayer. You're asking the Lord to give you gifts that you might not have. How many here would say, oh, you have prophetic gifts? Ser sincerely, how many here? Okay, look around the room. There's not a ton of people that would say, count themselves as prophetically gifted. But every one of you can encourage comfort and strengthen a brother or sister in the Lord. Every one of you can think of something good to say to someone that would bless them today. And it doesn't have to be somebody in the body right here. It could be the cashier at the big, the eagle, giant eagle, you know, big bird. Sorry, that's a Pittsburgh way of saying that. Sorry for you Pittsburghers that I just um, maligned your language. Um, have a mind among yourselves, Paul says which is yours in Christ. Do not. He didn't think that equality with God was something to be grasped, but emptied himself in the form of a servant. Do not conform any longer to this world, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind, Paul says in Romans chapter 12. So when Jesus is saying to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes and the whatever other uh, people who deem themselves more religious than Jesus or anyone else. The tax collectors and the prostitutes get it more than you do. It should smart in them and they should be asking the question, the kingdom of God is something that we have long pursued through the wrong means. How do we surrender to it? Paul says, therefore, God has exalt, highly exalted him and bestowed on him every um, on him the name that is above all names, so that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of Father. Therefore, beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. So here's the principle of surrender. In the quietness of your integrity, in the quietness of your righteousness, in the quietness of all these things we've been hearing from the scriptures, uh, applying principles of forgiveness and reconciliation. Let's do that whether anybody's looking or not. Amen. Let's be spending our days thinking about what would God have us do so that the body might be such an expression of love and healing and transformation that people would say, go to St. Luke's. There's something happening there. People are getting healed. They're being blessed. Their lives are changing. We're about to, to head into what I believe is a recession coming. Nobody's happy about that. 
Everybody is afraid that the government's going to shut down or whatever might happen. Let's let the body shine in those moments. Let's care for one another when we have extreme needs that we provide for one another. Let's give grace and peace and joy and comfort and strength to each one of us when we're going through times of loss and brokenness. Let's make sure that we're asking the questions. Do you really know the person sitting next to you? Do you know what's going on in their life, in their family? Do you know what they struggle with? Do you know the anxieties that they have? Do you know the spiritual battles that are going on? Have you partnered with them for the sake of the gospel so that they might not live under the weight of those things, but live in the freedom from those things so that they might pursue the heart of God? Imagine if all the backpacks of garbage that the enemy has tried to put on you, all the self-doubt, all the pity, all the shame, all the fear, all of those things that you hear repeated, whispered into your ear from parental figures or from authority figures that denigrate you. It's like a backpack that just holds another rock to slow you down and break down those knees that have been replaced. And the Lord just says, let me carry that. Let me take that from you. Let me give you the ability to walk in the freedom that I want you to walk in. We as a body um, are going to grow. I'm, I'm convinced of it. We as a church are going to have a greater sphere of influence. I see it happening already. Um, and I am so excited to see how it, it, uh, it just multiplies. But it can only happen is if you take your part. You can't be a benign appendage that just sort of sits there waiting for somebody to tell it what to do. The body doesn't function that way. The illustration that Paul uses about the body of Christ is you have a particular function, particular gifts. And if you feel the Lord nudging you into a gift that you don't have, it's time to start praying that he gives you the power to function in those gifts. One of the things I, I uh, loved to hear and laughed about when I heard people talking about spiritual gifts was the, the beginning of experts in the church. Have you ever had experts in the church? Oh, I'm the one who discerns tongues. I know what these languages are, and I can tell you exactly what that person says. Now, they might never say it that way out loud, but they're the person that every time there's a, sp a spoken word of tongues and there's a need for an interpretation, they're the first one in line. And we have lots of experts. Oh, I am the one who is the healer, because when, people, when I pray for people, people get healed. And so we as a body start to, instead of asking for healing gifts to come on ourselves so that we all can be healers, we say, oh, you should go to Father Scott. He's got the healing hands. He's, he's the one through which that gift flows. And so on and so on and so on because of our gifts. And that's just not the way the Lord operates. The Lord gives out the gifts for the purposes of building up the body so that the body might be ready. Are you available? St. Luke's, are you available? Let me ask you the question again. I'm asking for an answer. St. Luke's, are you available to God? Because if you are, then at daily you're going to be saying, Lord, what gift do you want to give me today? And for what purpose? And you might not know. He might not say anything. And you'll say, okay, show me when it gets here. So that you can go out and apply it when it needs to be applied. Jeremiah was the one prophet that was told, no one will ever stand with you. You will stand alone. You will stand alone out in a desert of people who should have known better. They will be decimated from the Babylonians. They will be taken and shipped all over the earth. And you will stand alone because you have been faithful. And I will bless you. And it is out of your words and out of adherence to my word 
that the people of God will be restored and rebuilt. To stand in Israel today, as we, Kristen and I did just recently, uh, was such a blessing. But even more so, to hear a modern Jewish believer in Jesus Christ say, God is doing today what he promised then. She's seeing the nation of Israel rise as if they were dry bones in a desert, being, having flesh put on it. And yes, there are a lot of flesh in the body of Christ, isn't there? But without the Spirit, without the Holy Spirit to come and direct and gift and send that flesh, we're just a lot of flesh and bones. Life, but not fruit. Let's pray that we will ask the Lord what our part is and that we'll do it because the Father has called us to live it out. Amen? Amen. Father, we come to you today asking for your gifting, for, uh, for us not to be the second son who step up and say we'll do it but not do it. Um, help us to be more like the first son. Well, maybe we would like to be the, first, the second son's answer and the first son's response. How about that? Help us to let our yes be yes and our no be no so that we might live into your gifting and do our part in the body so that together we might bring grace and power and transformation into the lives of this region. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. And while we're standing... Um, there are going to be some things that you notice that are some, some changes as we have been diversified with more hands up front. We just had a meeting this morning with the clergy and vergers and deacons and uh, the priests and deacons together. We, we are recognizing that we've got more people that can function up here. And one of the things we realize is that sometimes um, as the rector, uh, I can be a one-armed paper hanger and do all of the jobs uh, and bounce between leading worship and preaching and celebrating and doing cartwheels. Um, and that's okay. I love doing that stuff. Um, but now we have the gift of many clergy and the gift of many deacons. And those jobs are being better defined. And one of the roles that happens that you're being graced with is you've got four or five now or six or seven different people who have the potential of preaching. And what a beautiful thing is to hear different voices. Uh, so you also now have uh, several different voices that are leading worship. And I, I just want to say to you, just as uh, on principle, I'll say it again and again so we can get into this pattern, that whoever the celebrant is, the person who's leading the service, is the person that you come to for discernment when you've got a word from the Lord. Okay? So it's, it's easier for me if I'm playing... Uh, on Sunday morning leading worship that I have you come to Father John who's celebrant that day and say, I think the Lord is trying to say this um, and here's what it is. Do you, would you like me to share it? Would you like to share it? Do you have any discernment on that? Because sometimes I'll hear a word from somebody and say, you know what, that word is not for the whole congregation. That word is for you. And I'm going to listen and see how God is unpacking it for the congregation. But thank you for sharing. It always has honor and respect given to it, but the celebrant is going to be the one to discern that, okay? All right, just wanted to make sure, as you know, that those things are shifting. Let's stand together and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a
seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray for the church and the world as our hearts and voices proclaim our desire to see you move in our midst. We pray, Lord, for peace, that the world would operate in your presence, would apply your love, and live in unity until we are called into your heavenly kingdom. We pray for our archbishop, our bishop, our priests, and our deacons. We know that we are connected to a larger fellowship sphere of influence than just our church, and we pray that we would be unified in our purpose and in our ministry so that people would be drawn to your transforming love and kingdom purposes. Lord, we pray for our bishop and for the diocesan officers as they prepare for our synod coming up. We pray for the National Church as Archbishop Foley prepares to uh, step back from his role and for yes. an election next year. Yes, uh, Lord. We pray that you would already be preparing the heart of who it is that you want to serve in that area, that you would be building in them the authority and the blessing, the, the being set aside for that purpose. We pray, Lord, that your word would go out to the ends of the earth. We pray for all believers to have a hunger for your word and to seek to teach and disciple others from it. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Raise up all who are called. We pray for believers and for missionaries who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for you to call our nation back to you and for those in authority and in public service that they may seek your face and do your will. <clears throat> Give them humble hearts, Lord. We pray for the broken, for the anxious, for those depressed, for the ill, for those recovering, or for any form of physical or spiritual oppression. Bring your healing, Jesus. Thank you for the brother uh, in Steinberg. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. think of our brother Frank recovering. <clears throat> we pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. 
We thank you, Lord, for the hope of heaven, and we entrust those who have passed to your eternal care. For Stephen, our friend. For Evie and for Sarah, be with them, Lord. Father God, we lift our hearts to you in prayer, trusting our hopes and hearts' desires to your response. May we continue to give thanks for your continued hand upon our lives, that our hearts and minds would be aligned with your will as we pray to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us humbly confess our sins to the Lord, praying together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus, uh, hear what, <clears throat> sorry, hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy <clears throat> laden, and I will refresh you. The saying is trustworthy and deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Would you greet one another with the peace of the Lord? Peace. In case you uh, think the service is over, <laughs> the offertory script sentence comes from Scripture. Ascribe to the Lord the honor, do his name, bring offerings, and come into his court. Yeah. Hey. 
things come of you, O Lord, and, and of your own have we given you. you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, most holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy 
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And because we sang the Lord's Prayer today, we continue with the fraction. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Praying together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundance and great mercies. We are not your grace. We are not worthy so much as to gather up crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant, Grant us God. your peace. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. This is the Lord's table that I serve. All baptized Christians are welcome here. Um, we have a variety of ways that you can receive still. Uh, if you're feeling um, like you want to be safe and uh, want something prepackaged, we have those. If you would like a wafer over bread, we have that. Uh, bread can be intincted, which is coming to this side, and drinking from the cup is coming to this side. Um, please tell us what you want as you're coming down the aisle. It makes it easier for me. I don't read minds very well. <laughs> Purify my heart, 
Let me be as gold and precious silver purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, refine as fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy. Say
How can I ever wonder why? God, you're beautiful to me. God.
Please rise. There were a couple words that came as the flute, as Pam was playing flute over the congregation, and one was an image of a cloud rising, that there was clarity coming over this church. Thank you. Um, and the, the second was, um, was I, I would say, identity or ownership. The Lord was saying, you are mine. Thank you, Lord. Um, I think that summarizes what you were saying, correct? Uh, that the, the Lord is claiming us as his children, and that's a beautiful thing. John, did you want to come forward? and say, You had a word that the Lord gave you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the word the Lord has had for me was he desires to make this church a true kingdom church. Mm -hmm. Okay. A church that hasn't been seen since the time of Moses. Cool. He wants to give it that kind of power. But in order to do that, you've got to be all in for the kingdom, Amen. which I believe most of us believe we are, but you have to get rid of all the kingdoms of the world. Yes. And the two kingdoms of the world that we have trouble getting rid of are the Democrat and the Republican Party. <laughs> <laughs> They're kingdoms of the world. Praise God. No. We've got to get rid of them. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. They not only divide his church, but they're keeping the country from being everything that him and the Father had for us from before the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. If we become a true kingdom church, we'll transform society. Amen. That's what he wants to do. That's where he wants to take it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I, I will say that was... That was not a political statement. That's a biblical statement because the, the, the Bible would say uh, to all of us, you know, I am of Paul, I am of Paulus. No, we are to be of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Amen. let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out into the world to do the work that you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. All our problems. We send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties. We send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's work. We send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes. We set on the risen Christ. So now be blessed. Be blessed by Jesus, whom you've received. Forget not the poor. Pray for the sick. Make no peace with anything that would oppress you. And live as those who have surrendered, surrendered to Christ and yielded the flesh to the Spirit so that we might operate in freedom. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you today and always. Amen. Amen. Lifted high on that earth that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know that He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high on that earth that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know that He is the way to heaven. We want to see. We want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see Jesus lifted high. A banner that flies across this land. That all men might see the truth and know that He is the way to heaven. 
want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little we're taking down. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step, we're moving forward, little by little. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward, little by little we're taking ground. Let step us go by forth. Step, we're moving <laughs> forward. Little by little, we're taking ground. Every prayer puts our full weapon. Strongholds come tumbling down and down and down and down. What? We want to see. We want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see. We want to see. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>